Welcome to episode number 28 of Dominic Pernay's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto, and I'm an amateur astronomer and mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominic's course to you. Today's episode 28 is on the concept of twilight. Dominic's course is presented in full in his book, Celestial Navigation, and his exercise uh, manual that accompanies it. Uh, both are available by looking at marinenavigationbooks.com, and it'll tell you where you can order them. You can also download a PDF copy of the exercise manual, which you will need to complete the exercises in the course. Also at the uh, website is um, some worksheets that you can download, plotting uh, sheets and and other uh, free materials that uh, Dominique has available for you there. So let's get into twilight. So what is so important about twilight? Well, during the day, you have no problem taking sights of the sun because you can see the horizon and the sun. But in the evening, when you want to take star and planet sights, because that's when they'll, they'll be visible, you still have to be able to see the horizon and you need to be able to see the stars and the planets. Well, that's only really possible between civil and nautical twilight. Okay, and basically how are these defined? They're defined basically by where the sun is after it sets or before it rises in the morning. So when the sun is certain degrees below the horizon, that is what defines the beginning and end of certain types of twilight. So the time for taking uh, star and planet sites is between civil and nautical twilight because that's when the horizon is still visible and it's dark enough that you could see stars and planets, okay? It, in this area, you can see the horizon, but it's still the, sky, still, the sky is still too bright to see the uh, planets and the stars. Uh, after nautical twilight, you can't see the horizon anymore. So right in here is sort of the sweet spot when you can see the horizon and those stars and planets, okay? The other thing that you need to know about twilight is that it varies by latitude. So in this particular instance uh, at the uh, December solstice, excuse me, <clears throat> December solstice, there are certain parts of the earth where there is no twilight. It's daylight all the time. And there's also parts where it's night all the time. So that's one obvious uh, thing that depends on latitude. More importantly, the amount of time you have for latitude, uh, twilight, and when it starts and ends depends on your latitude. So here on the equinox, you can see that uh, twilight lasts for a very short period of time, and in other parts of the Earth, it lasts for a long period of time. So very much dependent on latitude. And same thing in the uh, June solstice, but just opposite, right? Here in, in June, you never have nighttime, and down here, you always have nighttime. So and again, very dependent on latitude. So let's do an example. Our boat's at 47 degrees north, longitude 123 degrees west. It's July 2nd, 2003, and we want to take some sights in the morning. So we need to figure out that sweet spot time between civil and nautical twilight. So here's what the twilight tables look like in the almanac. On the right hand side, you'll see the morning twilight times up here, and down here you'll see the evening twilight times. And again, we're trying to find times somewhere between nautical and civil, or between civil and nautical. Okay, somewhere, somewhere in there. That's the time you want to take your sights. But the other thing to notice is that the latitudes are not individually listed, right? You don't see 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. You just see jumps of 50 or maybe jumps of two, sometimes even jumps of 10, right? Depending on where you are, uh, wherever your latitude is. So you're gonna definitely have to do some interpolating uh, for your particular latitude. So in our example, uh, we're at 47 degrees. So we're gonna be looking at the latitudes between 45 and 50 and interpolating for 47. Okay, and if you looked in the tables, these would be the numbers you'd pull out for those two latitudes. Uh, for your morning site, and your difference in latitude is five degrees, and your difference in times are here. Uh, the first step in the interpolation is to find out uh, how many uh, minutes you have to uh, interpolate for each single minute, uh, single for each single degree. 
So if we have a five degree difference in latitude, we need to find out what the one degree difference is. So that's one fifth of, of uh, these times. We need, and then you just round, right? We're not looking for exact times. So you round these uh, divided by five and you get uh, these numbers here. Then what you do is you multiply the degrees of latitude of the boat below 50, right? Because we see as you go below 50, you're adding time, right? So we just need to uh, figure that out and add. If you like to subtract, you can do the opposite because from 45, we're going down. So you could um, do that as well. But here we're gonna do the easy one, we're gonna add. So that's three degrees below 50 to get to 47. So we get three times nine, three times six, three times four. And that's the amount of time that we have to uh, add to our 50 degree uh, twilight times and sun, sunrise times to get the actual UTC uh, times of um, twilight if we happen to be at the Greenwich Meridian. Now, it turns out that those twilight times are actually good all the way around the earth if your watch is set to local mean time, okay? If a watch is set to uh, local mean time, which is also called boat meridian time, uh, if it was set that way, then the sun would cross your local meridian at your boat at the time that's on your watch that's listed in the almanac for that day under the meridian passage, okay? That's the definition of local mean time. Um, but I would guess that there is no boater who keeps his watch set to local mean time. Most people are gonna set their, their watch to some particular time zone time. So let's take an example. Let's assume our boat is at longitude 126 degrees west and they have their watch set on zone eight time, which is the time at 120 degrees west, okay? Well, if your boat is west of that meridian, you're going to have to add time to adjust for the motion of the Earth, uh, which you can get from the arc to time table. 126 minus 120 is six degrees of longitude. And if you look that up in the table, that's 24 minutes. If you remember from way back when, we talked about four minutes per degree of longitude. So four times six is 24, pretty simple. So what you have to do is then to find the time that will be on your watch for these twilight times for that sweet, you know, sweet spot of, of uh, time interval, you're going to have to take what we just calculated and add 24 minutes to account for the fact that you're not on your time zone meridian for your watch. Okay. Now, if you were east of the time zone, you would have to subtract because you're going to, the earth is going to have gotten to you quicker than it got to the center of your meridian. So if you happen to be six degrees east of 120 degrees uh, west, you'd be subtracting 24 minutes, okay? So west, you add, east, you subtract. Now, if you happen to have your watch set to UTC, right? And a lot of boaters have a watch that's set to UTC because there's a lot of uh, advantages to doing that you'll want to know the UTC time of twilight where you are, okay? And you, basically it's the same concept. It's just that your watch is set to a meridian that's over at Greenwich. Well, again, you know that Greenwich is um, so many degrees west or east of you. I'm sorry, you're, you're west or east of Greenwich. Um, you're gonna use the same concept. You can look in that table for 126 degrees, or you can do the uh, calculation of 15 degrees per hour, whichever works for you. And in either case, at 126 degrees west, that's eight hours and 24 minutes. Now you can ignore the uh, you know minutes of angle and just go for the closest a whole degree of meridian. Again, it's not gonna make too much difference. So then what you'll do, since you're west, you're going to add eight hours and 24 minutes to the twilight times in the almanac, and that'll give you the UTC time of twilight where you are on your boat on that meridian. Uh, it, again, if you're east of Greenwich, right, you're in the eastern hemisphere, then um, you're going to be subtracting the time to get the UTC time for twilight at your boat. So again, 
West you add, East you subtract. And now you've got an exercise to try. Here's some uh, pos uh, positions of your boat and, uh, at a, and on a particular date. And you, what you'll want to do is walk through the exercise just like we just did. You're going to start with your boat latitude uh, using the Greenwich Meridian. And, or again, if you had your watch set to local mean time, it'd be the same thing. And you find, you do your calculation, you get your twilight time at the latitude at Greenwich. Then what you can do is um, figure out what that would be for where you are, either in zone time or in uh, UTC time. It's up to you which way you want to calculate it. And then just take an estimate of where that sweet spot time would be that you would take your site on the planets. And you'll be able to um, do this exercise by downloading the exercise manual, which um, has the twilight tables for November 18th. Um, it also has the conversion of arc to time tables. And, um, and obviously the answer uh, to this in the book so you could check yourself. And if you get it wrong, then you've learned something. You go back over it and do it again uh, until it makes sense and you get it right. And that's how you learn. Next time, we will take this information about Twilight and start using it to do a site with planets. Uh, that's really the next easiest thing to learn how to do. Um, there's really only one extra concept you need from everything that you know about taking uh, sites on the sun. Other than A, you need to be able to calculate Twilight so you know when to, when to do this. Um, and the actual calculation itself for the uh, planet site is got just one extra step. Everything else is exactly the same as the sun. So hopefully you'll find it fairly easy and you'll see an application of using these uh, twilight calculations. All right, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening.